I'm, I'm curious to see what will happen here tomorrow night with the reaction. Well, Toronto is almost like your hometown. I mean, That's true. Yeah. Uh, they love you here. Yeah, I, it should go okay. I mean, Canadians are great. I they like to be cool. critical of the United States. They like to feel right. superior to our... Uh, There's a lot of Americans. Sicko is so. like that, too. Yeah, I mean, that's you true. Know. Yeah. But um, what, here's my question for you. I wondered, when I talked to you in Cannes um, a while back, uh, you were just starting on this road, and I wondered if you could tell me how much you knew when you started about what the final... Uh, movie was going to be like. I mean, you go out and you look and you search and you find, and and the the events were just unfolding rapidly as you were doing this. So it must have just taken off uh, in different ways. How did you contain it and how did you shape it? You know, surprisingly, the the sort of outline that I wrote bef- at the beginning of this, which was before the crash, um, is very close to what the film is, with the exception of the crash part of the movie itself. And after a few weeks of the crash. I realized that neither I nor anybody really understood what was going on. So I made it a goal to try and and, and um, tell the story of what happened here with this collapse in a way where the average person would understand it. Because when you get talking about derivatives and credit default swaps and all this stuff, people... You handle just, that in a very amusing way, actually. Well, it's how everybody <laughs> feels, right? I, 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 and they, and they, I wanted them to know that it's supposed to be confusing. They want it to confusing because they don't want people to really understand what's going on. So you basically have several different prongs. You have the real folks and you know, who's, who are really undergoing a lot. So you go to these people who are being thrown out of their homes. Right. And there's another prong which has to do with fighting back. That right. seems to be very important to you. You're trying to get people to rise up and, and uh, fight the man on some level. Because, well, I think, see, I think they're already rising up. I already feel that there's something simmering in the country. And you just look at the people in the film that are very different than the victims in Roger and me who just sort of accept their plight. Uh, a lot of these people are getting pretty upset, and they're talking and saying things that are, like, scary in, in some levels, you know. And the last thing I would hate to see would be for violence to, to take place. So I'm asking people to address this because there's this, there is this boiling anger in the country, and I think that, that um, um, some you know, there's going to be a tipping point here. I don't know what to say. I'm just, I'm just trying to. I feel like I've spent 20 years issuing warnings about General Motors, Cassandra, <laughs> yeah, Bush. No weapons of mass destruction. There's no weapons of mass destruction. Uh, <laughs> and uh, at some point, it's, um, you know, what am I going to do? Well, how did you, the the thing that was going on in Chicago is very indicative. I, I have to admit, I wasn't aware of that story. Yeah. That blew Did you my know about mind. dead peasants insurance? Or no. Uh-uh. no? Do you know so if pilot, pilots are being paid that little? No. No. Yeah. You're, you're telling me stuff I don't know. Yeah. Do you remember seeing footage of Don Regan telling Reagan to speed it up? No. And I had never seen that extraordinary footage of uh, FDR either, which I thought it was great that you ran it at the full length. Did you have some <clears throat> debate about that? Yes. And I thought it, it deserved it. And the reason you haven't seen it is because it had been lost. We found it. The Roosevelt Library didn't have it. The Roosevelt family didn't have it. In fact, they didn't even know, they didn't know anybody had actually shot it because he was sick that day, so he had just given the address over the radio from the White House. And I have such a crack archival research team. They found it in South Carolina. And we now have made it possible for, for the Roosevelt Library. It now has a copy of this because of where we found it, buried uh, at this college, amongst all this Fox uh, movie tone uh, newsreel stuff not marked or anything. Now, the only thing that I thought you might have gone, um, might, you might be getting some blowback on, is, you know, there's always been this debate about what's real documentary and what's, you know, you, you, you yeah, we, the fact that you insert yourself in your movies has become so uh, established as a, a way of making documentaries. You've changed the way people accept that now. But the idea that you took the, the Bush footage and doctored it and, and, you know, played around with that, where what is that about? Oh, well, I wouldn't say we doctored it. We just had a Monty Python moment. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that I, you know, it's because I've already made my movies about Bush. I don't need to do anything else with Bush. I was trying to actually keep him out of the movie, and I just thought, you know, just for our one last hurrah here with Bush, <laughs> why don't we just, you know, here he is trying to scare everybody. You know, why don't we just have some fun with it? You know, and so you know, essentially he's creating Armageddon. And you're animating all this stuff yeah, behind animated. him. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 <laughs> I mean, 
So, so how do you find the balance? Because you take this dead serious. I know you do. Um, how do you, when you're in the editing room, you've got all this material that you've cracked. You know, how, how long did you stay in the editing room, and how did you figure out how to shape this thing? And what the balance would be between the really fun stuff, like I love it when you go around all the buildings with the crime scene yellow tape, and you know that that's very effective. But there, they, you know, you have to like. There's a part of me that wonders if you don't want to be, you know, taken very seriously in this subject, and and yet you're pulling back and doing more comedic material is at the same time. No, no, no. I'm, I'm making a movie, first of all. I'm making a piece of entertainment that I want people to go see on a Friday night. If I was just doing a political speech, I'd run for office or start a political organization. No, this is... I mean, I'm making a movie that I want you to enjoy watching. And so sometimes it's funny, sometimes it's sad, sometimes you're angry, sometimes you're sitting and thinking. Uh, you know, all those things that you want to have happen in any kind of good movie. And I'm trying to make a good movie, a great movie. Every time I set out to make one, that's what I'm thinking about. So um, the hard part about a documentary is, is you really can't write it until you shoot it. So you're writing it in the edit room. That's a, that's a kind of a back-ass way to, you know, to make a movie, but that's how documentaries, good documentaries, are, are made. And so this film took, um, you know, maybe had a month of shooting overall if you added up all the days, but then about seven or eight months of editing. At least, yeah. yeah. And so, so, so tell me what, how you figured out what the, what the structure of this thing was going to be, you know, how you were going to shape it. You had to come up with some kind of underlying threads that you were going to Well, I wanted to. to, I wanted to look at these three premises, or actually two premises that I started with, which is capitalism is not democratic and it's not moral. It's an immoral system and it's, and it's anti-American. Um, but then a third one, because of the crash, came about, which is it doesn't work. <laughs> so forget about whether it's not democratic or it's immoral. It just doesn't work. It's a fraud. It's a Ponzi scheme where a few people at the top get really, really rich, and everybody else serves them as their, as their you know, uh, ant slaves. What are, those sla what are those ants called? The, the worker drones yeah, or something. Yeah, what are the worker drones or whatever. Anthropologists, when they dig us up 400 years from now, they're not going to look kindly on us. They're, they're going to wonder why, if we were free people and lived in a democracy, we allowed the upper 1% to own and control everything. 